Taking you now to Italy, where the biggest, most powerful mafia group you may never have heard of is based. The crime syndicate has a global reach, but can operate from the humblest hideouts. The Indrangheta is not just your regular mafia, based in the southern Italian region of Calabria. This organization has gone on to become Italy's most feared and powerful mafia. In fact, their influence is not only limited to the boundaries of the country, but also extends to some other European, as well as South American countries. But what makes them so scary and spine chilling? That they're termed the nightmare of mafias. Make sure to watch this video to the end as we discuss the secrets and internal workings of this badass mafia. But before we start the video, be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and also hit the notifications button so you get notified every time I drop them videos. To get a better understanding of the Indrangheta Mafia, one has to get a deeper insight into their history and background. Even though there have been conflicting stories and theories of how they came to be, the widely agreed one has to be that it was founded in the 1860s by a gang of Sicilian outlaws who had established a base in Italy's mountainous region of Aspromonte. With the region famed for its rocky and mountainous terrain, it immediately provided cover for the bandits who had been exiled from their Sicilian homelands. With its operations now extending to several overseas countries, nothing has changed much as Calabria remains the Mafia's base, or should I say ancestral home, as well as the power base to which all members must pay homage. So huge is the influence of the Indrangheta Mafia that it's been thought to make as much as between 50 to 60 billion US dollars yearly. To put into better perspective, that's like the entire GDP of a country like Croatia, or better still, about 3.4% of Italy's GDP. So how do they make this money? The Indrangheta Mafia makes a large bulk of their money from drug trafficking, with reports by Italian investigators claiming that the group controls an estimated 86% of cocaine coming into Europe from the Calabrian port of Gioia Toro and also controlling some of the world's most profitable trafficking routes. But that doesn't mean that's the only means through which they got their wealth. The Indrangheta also deals with arms trafficking, extortion, prostitution, human trafficking, and money laundering. Through this, they're able to do without getting detected by global financial systems. The Indrangheta Mafia is able to launder huge amounts of money by employing very complex ownership structures and financial secrecy laws to hide their source of wealth. Their network of activity even extends to legitimate ventures like construction, green energy, and waste management. They've been fingered in several attempted murders, murders, and even kidnapping. In fact, between the early 1970s and 1990s, it was estimated that more than 200 abductions were carried out across Italy by criminals who had affiliations with the Indrangheta Mafia. The ransoms, which were received, were in turn used in the expansion of the organization to where it is today. Having initially started out as a rival to the Cosa Nostra Mafia, the Indrangheta Mafia were forced to settle for the cocaine market, as the highly lucrative heroin market was controlled by the Cosa Nostra. There was, however, a power shift in the early 1980s, when all of a sudden, there was a worldwide high demand for cocaine, and the Indrangheta Mafia was able to leverage on this sudden boom by expanding their operations. It's easy to say that this was the turning point for the Indrangheta Mafia, but could that have been what have kept them going, considering there are now several rivals in the drug trade? The answer is no, no, no. What separates the Andrangheta Mafia from the other mafias in Italy, and possibly in most parts of the world, has been their unique way of recruiting new members, something which has kept them this far. The Andrangheta Mafia recruits members only based on blood relationships, meaning only people related by blood are admitting as new members. With that, the family bond shared makes it difficult for the Italian authorities to investigate their criminal activities. This is only made possible because sons of older members are expected to follow in their father's footsteps as they would have been groomed from a younger age until they're deemed ready. From Giovanni Donori, meaning boys of honor until they eventually become Omini di Onori, which means men of honor. This means one becomes a member of the Indrangheta Mafia for the single fact of being born into a mafia family. That's like saying they didn't choose the path, the path chose them. That's not to say it's still the same now, though because let's be real, things seem to have changed slightly. We now seem to see non Ken also being admitted into the Indrangheta Mafia. The close ties between the members have only gone ahead to help establish branches of the Mafia in other countries of the world. The Indrangheta Mafia is reported to have expanded their activities to all of them. The family bond has not only worked as a shield to protect age-long secrets and enhance security for its members, it's also helped to maintain their identity in the territory of origin and also reproduce such identities and territories outside of Italy. 
So basically, to become an informant for the authorities as a former member, it would mean that the person is ready and willing to snitch on his father, uncle, cousins, and nephews. That would be a crazy thing to do though. Like we know, gang members do snitch on other members just to get their own freedom. But in this case, for a member of the Andrangheta Mafia to snitch, he would be doing that at the expense of a family member. I ain't sure anyone is willing to go down that road, or what do you think? Another important feature of the Andrangheta Mafia has to be its well-structured leadership hierarchy that it's adopted for decades. The structure of the Andrangheta Mafia can be divided into two. First on the top part of the food chain is a group referred to as the Crimine, which is said to be the organization's supreme council. After that, we have another group called the Mondometi, which includes the three bodies corresponding the different districts of Calabria, in the north, the west, and the south. Next is the Andrina Familia clan, to which every organizational member belongs to. In short, a family affiliated with the Andrangheta Mafia is known as the Andrina, and just like I said earlier, is restricted to a bunch of men related by blood. Each Andrina is named after the surname of the boss, with the same last name often end up being prosecuted for being members of the Andrina. The Andrina is usually in control of a small town or neighborhood, and if there are more than one Andrina operating in the same town, they come together to form what is known as a locale. Each locale has three main characters, the first being the boss, or capo bastone, who is said to have full control of the locale. The second character is the accountant, while the third one is the crimine, who is the minister of war or arms. The Andrangheta Mafia is a loose confederate of about 100 organized groups referred to as the Koshe, with each group claiming control over a particular territory. The Andrangheta Mafia, in general, has been reported to have about 10,000 members worldwide, and on top of that structure is the crimine. The San Luco has been considered as the stronghold of the Andrangheta Mafia, with almost all the male inhabitants of the city belonging to the Mafia. The Andrangheta Mafia has also been reported to be the only Italian Mafia to have maintained a culture of passing down ancient rites orally and through secret codes. With growth of the Andrangheta Mafia has not only carried out robberies and local extortions, but also moved into more lucrative ventures like kidnapping and cigarette smuggling. Another interesting thing about the Andrangheta Mafia has been the occasional meeting of members of the group at the Sanctuary of Polsi. You might be wondering what that means. At Polsi, bosses from outside Calabria and from other parts of the world converge for their meetings. The annual meetings, called the Crimini, ensures that every boss must give account of all the activities carried out during the year, as well as important activities that might have taken place in his territory. It's in these meetings that facts about kidnappings, murders, and the likes are relayed by the bosses involved. The importance of such a meeting has long been underestimated until 1969, when the Italian police managed to raid the Crimini, which was held in Montalto Summit. At the end of the raid, more than 70 Andrangheristi were arrested while others managed to flee. Just like every other mafia, the fact that the Andrangheta were made of bloodlines does not mean that there have not been internal rumblings and rivalries amongst clans. The tussle for power and territories often lead to bloodshed and this kind of setup, and even the close ties could not deter the members from towing that path. The first of such was the internal struggle of 1974 to 1977. It might have lasted just three years, but at the end of the whole conflict, about 233 lives were reported to have been lost due to the tussle. There was also a reoccurrence of the internal war, but this time, it started in 1985 up till 1991. The war broke out after a struggle over public contracts, and by the time the dust had settled, it was reported that between 500 to more than 1,000 people lost their lives to the six-year-long feud. However, since March 2010, the Italian Penal Code has recognized the Andrangheta as an organization of mafia-type association, and in June 2012, several arrests of Andrangheta members now in other news, dozens of members of a notorious branch of the Italian Mafia have been arrested after a series of raids across, across several European countries. Wednesday's operation came after a two-year investigation into the Andrangheta criminal group on allegations of cocaine trafficking, money laundering, bribery and violence. At least 90 people were arrested. This was made following an investigation into several Switzerland bank accounts that were involved in cocaine trafficking to Europe. Four months later, to show the kind of influence and power the organization now has, the city council of Reggio Calabria, which was a regional government, was dissolved for alleged ties with the Andrangheta Mafia. This made the council the first government provincial council to be dismissed. As a matter of fact, the infiltration of the Mafia into political offices is not limited to Calabria. 
In December 2019, the Italian government also continued its major crackdown on the Andrangheta, which was the second largest in number in the history of Italian organized crime. At the end, more than 300 people were arrested in Calabria on suspicion of having ties with the group. The operation involved about 2,500 police officers. There were insinuations that the influence of the Andrangheta Mafia was now dwindling, which is because the group, which had earlier appeared to be immune to turncoats or repentant members, now have relations willing to testify against their clans. But will that slow down the ever-increasing power and influence of the Andrangheta, a group that has been referred to as Italy's most powerful mafia organization? Even the Italian authorities will tell you that's impossible. What do you think? Let me know in the comments section.